Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and in today's episode of the 10 Minute Gardener we're going to be planting one of my all-time favourite soft fruit which is black currants. If you've watched one of our fruit ground videos before you need to skip the next sort of 30 seconds to a minute because it's repeated on each one. Before you start with any single variety of fruit, make sure you're prepared for planting it. You need a large bucket of water if you're dealing with bare-rooted plants. You need some fish blood and bone. That's the fertiliser that we're going to add into the ground. You could use grow more, but fish blood and bone uh, works over a longer period. It is organic. And the other thing about it is it's much harder to burn the delicate roots. You need some mycorrhizal fungi. If you don't know what mycorrhizal fungi is, there is a video we've done separately on this. There's a link below this film that will take you straight to it. Well worth incorporating into your planting schemes, into your planting holes. It can quadruple the amount of root growth you get. If you're planting trees, you need some tree ties and a stake. Some good quality compost or some garden compost or well-rotted manure if you can get your hands on it. And obviously, you need your plants. Now this variety of plants has just arrived with me. They all came from a specialist grower and I cannot sort of recommend enough use a specialist grower. My choice has been Blackmore Fruit in Hampshire who have been superb, fantastic range um, of varieties available and you cannot sort of help but be impressed with the quality of these sort of plants when they arrive. And you're thinking about some of these being with you for 25, 30 years. If we're planting pears, they're gonna be with your grandchildren. So go for the best, go for a specialist. Right, now we'll be dealing with whatever variety we're talking about today. It's gotta be the all-time favorite soft fruit, isn't it? You know, so many blackcurrant drinks out there. It's brilliant for making into jams. As a cordial or as a concentrate, it's fantastic with sort of sparkling white wine, one of the best aperitifs you can get. And the thing about blackcurrants is they're really quite easy and incredibly versatile. Now I'm gonna be growing two types. This is called Titania. Uh, one of the newer varieties, very sweet, very early, and we're going to be growing this as a half standard, which means we have the stem this long, and that gives us a lot of height, a lot of structure, and it also means that you can incorporate this into all sorts of plans, or planting schemes, I should say, rather than plans. This is bare-rooted, and as I said before, with every single bare-rooted plant, do not leave it out in the elements, do not let the air get to it. Once it arrives, it'll arrive wrapped in a plastic bag, get it into a bucket of water for an hour, a couple of hours before you plant it. Don't leave those delicate roots exposed any longer than you have to. The thing with black currants is they like a lot of muck, they like a lot of compost incorporated into the actual soil they're going to be grown in. And with these beds, which I knew I was going to put soft fruit in, I've double dug each one of these beds and got piles and piles of compost in so I'll be able to just literally plant my back currants using f fish blood and bone as a fertilizer uh, it's a very balanced natural fertilizer which I do like to use it doesn't burn the roots of your plants the important thing about black currants is that you want them about five centimeters or the length of an average finger lower in the ground than you actually see the marks now We've got two types here, we've got the half standard and the bush. And as you can see, these bushes have the most fantastic root system on them. But we're going to have to take off these white labels, because rather than being here, we want it right up to the edge. You know, about, so these ones are actually buried just underground. And as you can see, this is already starting to bud. And we're only in uh, the third or fourth week on life, fourth week of February. So you want a hole big enough to be able to spread out those roots. You want to add your fish blood and bone and you want some mycorrhizal fungi. If you've never used mycorrhizal fungi, it's worth watching the video. There is a link below here and it will improve dramatically the actual results you get. So we'll just add that to this planting hole at the end and that's where we'll be popping one of our bushes. Now always remember to add some of this fertilizer as well as to the bottom of your planting hole to the piles either side. And what you don't want to do is open up the soil lower than the actual uh, double digging. But it's always worthwhile using your fork just to push it in to break up the bottom into the sides to break up the sides. My 
mycorrhizal fungi is naturally occurring, so it's not as though I'm asking you to put any Dr. Frankenstein stuff in your garden. This isn't GM modified. I'm still shocked that we're putting the same thing you find in jellyfish into corn, but hey, it's not me who's eating it. You take this wonderful plant, look at the root system on this. You can already taste it, can't you? Make sure, as I say, you're below soil level. And the easy way to do that is lay your fork or spade over and you can see it's going to actually be about five centimetres below. And then you can just start to gently backfill. You can use a spade. I'm far too unconcerned about getting mucky. I don't mind using my hands. And like all bare roots, as you backfill, do a little jig. And the jig, as you're backfilling, is to get soil between all those roots. It's to get the fungi into contact with all those roots. You don't want air spaces in there. And we just literally backfill this. And then we'll very gently press it in. Once you've pressed it in, water with at least two gallons from a watering can, no matter if you're planting in torrential rain, water with two gallons from a watering can. And then we're going to top dress with some more well-rotted organic manure or compost. And that'll be it. I'll get the other two in and I'll show you what it looks like finished. We've got our three black currants in, two bushes and as I said the half standard. With a half standard you will have to stake it which means putting something in to support it. The thing with staking half standards you want the stake the side that the prevailing wind's coming from which is over here for me. You take your tree tie round back through the little separator and then that's going to go round your stake. And there is some research, especially with trees, to say you want to stake it quite low down because the top wobbling creates more root growth. So the top moving around naturally in a tree, that whipping action of the top of a young tree, makes the roots go out further and stabilise it. So the old method of staking trees very, very high is actually sort of uh, probably not the right way to go. And we just tighten that off, water them all in. As I say, this is Titania. The other two currants we're growing are a new variety called Big Ben. It's supposed to be twice as large as an average black currant and give you twice the yield, but still with all the taste. So I've eaten it, I've seen it growing, but I've never grown it myself, so that'll be an experiment uh, for this year. So that's black currants. If I've got to grow a currant, probably this would be it because everybody will like it. Thanks a lot for watching.